Hello and welcome back to the course on artificial intelligence. And today we're talking about Markov decision processes or MDPs. Let's have a look what we've got today. So last time we stopped on the concept of a map. So because we've calculated the values based on the Bellman equation, we can derive this map for our agent of this maze. And basically what that means is wherever the agent starts, so let's say it starts over there, it knows exactly which steps to take in order to get to the finish line. So it just goes up, up, right, right, and done. And so the question here is, is that it? Is it really that simple? Is reinforcement learning really that, you know, for the lack of a better word, boring? It's, it's uh, you, once you have the map, that's it. All you have to do is you're done. You just follow the map. Well, the reality is that it's not actually that all simple. And that's a good thing because it makes this course more interesting for us and we can actually solve much more complex problems. So this is where a mark of processes come in. But first we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about deterministic search versus non-deterministic search. So let's talk about the concept of deterministic search. This is our agent in the maze and deterministic search means that if the agent decides to go up, then what will happen is with 100% probability, it will go up. That's exactly what will happen. There's no other options. Once, once it says go up or clicks the up arrow, it will go up. There's no other options. Now, on the other hand, non-deterministic search is when our agent says it wants to go up. There are actually a couple of options. For example, there could be three options. And we're going to be looking at an example where there are three options, but it doesn't have to be limited to three. It could be four. It could be, you know, different. Depending on depends on the problem, the randomness could be different. But in our case, it can be three options. With an eighty percent chance, he does go up. But then, with a ten percent chance, when he wants to go up, he'll actually go to the left, just because because that's how the environment works. That's the world that he lives in. And with another ten percent chance, he'll actually go right. And in this case, he'll fall into the fire pit. So that is how it all works. That's an example of a non-deterministic search, a stochastic process. And what the point of this is, is to make a more realistic model of what could actually happen in a, in a real world, in a real world type of problem. Because very rarely do you get situations like this when, when you do something and it happens exactly that way. And even if you think about it in terms of games, let's say you've got an agent playing Pac-Man. Well, not always is it the case that if he's standing in this square, he goes up, he will get the same exact result every time. He will, he will indeed go up, but it may be in one case, he won't get eaten by a ghost. In another case, he will get eaten by a ghost. So as you can see, there's some randomness to it because it depends on how the ghosts are moving. And they don't always move the same way. They don't always start in the same locations. So it's it's very logical. It's very, it's fair that there is some randomness. There's something that is not under the control of the agent. And that is this is just a way for us to represent that in order for us to learn how we can deal with it and how that affects the Bellman equation, how it affects the whole reinforcement learning process. It's But at the same time, the randomness is, of course, not limited to if you go up, there's a 10% chance you'll go right or 10% chance you'll go left. Or if you go down, there's a 10% chance you'll go right or left. Or if you go right, there's a 10% chance you'll go up or down. It's not limited to where you're going to end up. Sometimes you might have a problem that is, is exactly like this. Sometimes the probabilities might be different. Sometimes the randomness might boil down to something else. It might be bo boiled down like in that example of Pac-Man of the ghosts eating you or not eating you. Or it might boil down to something different for instance like there's there's like if the agent is playing doom and then there's something uh, like a, a monster which is going to shoot him in one case another case there's like there's a probability with which it will sh get shot and with which it won't get shot and so on so something that is out of the control of the agent something that it cannot predict that's what we are modeling here in non-deterministic search and this is where we have directly approached two new concepts, mark of processes and, or mar a mark of process and mar a mark, mark of decision process. So let's have a look at these. And you know how much I don't like to put definitions and lots of text on the slides, but in this case, it is necessary for us to uh, go through them. So let's have a look. A stochastic process has a mark of property if the conditional probability distribution of future states of the process, conditional on both past and present states, depends only upon the present state not on the sequence of events that preceded it. A process with this property is called a Markov process. 
very complex definition and it kind of like even a little bit, not contradicts itself, but it feels like it contradicts itself. So here it says conditional both for past and the present state, depends only upon, but at the same time, it only depends upon the present state. So don't get too bogged down in that. Uh, I'll, I'll break it down in simple terms. So a mark of property is when your future states, so not just your choice, but the whole thing, your choice and the environment, it will only like the results of 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 the of the action you take in that environment will only depend on where you are now. It will not depend on how you got there, and that's it. So that's a marker property, and a process which has this property is called a marker process. So, in to put it into an example, so if your agent is here, and if he goes, if he decides to go up, he might go. He in our case, in our non-deterministic search example, he actually might go left and right or the right. That's because we have that stochasticity inside our environment. We have that randomness inside our environment. So any one of these three might happen, but the key here is that this is a mark of process because we don't care how he got here. He could have come from the top, ended up here. He could have come from the left, ended up here. He could have come from the bottom, ended up here. He could have like play, moved around here like 100,000 times and then got here. It does not matter what happened before. Only what matters is what which state is he in now. And so the the probabilities of going left or right or up, they will always be the same if he's in this state now. And so that's basically just saying, it doesn't matter what happened before, we're here now, this is the state you're in. And don't, don't forget that state doesn't just mean where he's standing. The state is the state of the whole of the whole uh, of the agent in the environment. So is there like monsters on the right or are there monsters on the left? Or, uh, you know, is the ghost coming from the top of the bottom? Whatever state you're in now, it doesn't matter how you got there. It doesn't matter how it how it all came to be that you're there in that state now. What will happen in the future is only determined by the state you're in now plus the actions you will take. Then plus, of course, the randomness that is overlaid on top of that. So that's a mark of process. And a mark of decision process or an MDP uh, or mark of decision processes provide a mathematical framework for model, modeling decision-making in situations where outcomes are partly random and partly under control of a decision maker. So important to understand uh, that mark of decision process, processes are different, a different whole concept to mark of process to a mark of process. They're kind of like a mathematical framework. So, but at the same time, I thought it was important for us to understand what a mark of process is because I think it still helps in, in the understanding of a mark and mark of decision process. So, a mark of decision process is. The, is exactly what we've been discussing up till now. So that the agent lives in this environment where it has control. Like remember previously, it had full control of the of what's going on, but now it has a little bit less control. It can decide to go up, but it actually knows, okay, so if I go up, there's an 80% chance I'll go up, there's a 10% chance I'll go left, 10% chance I'll go right. So not everything is fully under its control. There is some randomness in this environment. That's exactly what a mark of decision process is. A mark of decision process is the framework that the agent will use in order to understand what to do in this environment. So we've got an environment with some stochasticity, some randomness, and now the agent has to choose, for instance, should it go up, down, left, or right? It has to make that decision. It doesn't know what to do. And in order to make that decision, it's going to apply a framework is going to be using a mark of decision process in order to make that decision, what, what's going to happen, where it's going to go. And so basically this environment that poses this problem, it is referred to as the mark of decision process. So um, it's the framework that agent using at the same time, the environment is refer referred to that the agent is operating in a mark of decision process environment. And so basically here we've got two concepts. We've got the mark of process is the way this environment is designed that the part, the, it does the what happens from where you are now doesn't depend on the past. And then at the same time, we've got the mark of decision process is the framework that the agent is going to be using in order to solve this environment. And the good news is that the mark of decision process or that framework that we're talking about is actually just an add-on to our Bellman equation. Is the Bellman equation, but just a bit more sophisticated. So uh, let's have a look at that. This is our Bellman equation so far. It's the maximum of all possible actions. So the value of being in a state is the maximum of all possible actions that you can take from that state. The maximum is taken from the reward that you would get by taking that action in that state plus a discount factor times the value of the next state, which is S prime. So that's what we've had so far. And now because we have some randomness in our whole process, this, this part will change because we don't actually know which state we'll end up in. We don't know what S prime will be. Will it be 
if we're going up, will it be up or will it be left or will it be right? So we actually have to place this with the expected value of the next state. So here we're going to replace this. So there's three possible states we can end up in. And so we're going to replace that with that's a value. The, that state has a value of S1 prime. That state has a V of S prime two, S2 prime. And this state has a value of V of S3 prime. So now we're going to multiply the uh, state that we actually are intending to go into by 80% because that's our probability of getting into that state plus the probability of getting into this state, 10% plus probability of getting into this state. So um, this is just our expected value. So if, uh, from statistics, if we take the expected value of uh, getting into, of, of the state that we'll get into, so kind of like the average, what's, what's the average of, of what we'll get. And then we replace that over here then we get this equation. Now it jumps very quickly just because this equation is bigger, but if you look at it carefully, you'll see it's exactly the same thing. So you've got max here, you've got max here. Then you've got R of S and A, you've got R of S and A. Here you've got gamma, you've got gamma. And then finally here you've got V. So you knew exactly it was a de deterministic search. You knew which state you'll get into. Now you don't know which state you'll get into. So instead of taking V, you're taking the expected value of the state you'll get into or of the future state or just in simpler terms, you're just taking the average of what you'll get into. So, you know, if like it was a, in a, in a, like for us, a 33% chance, then it'll be like this plus this plus this divided by three, basically. But in this case, it's, it's not, it's not exactly like average, average. It's, it's a weighted average because of your probabilities here. So here you've got the probability of when you're in this state, you take this action of getting into state S prime times the value of S prime and summed across all S primes that you could possibly get into over here. So exactly what we had three here, one, two, three, add them up, multiply by probabilities, add them up. Same here, one, two, three, multiply them by probabilities and add them up. And that is your new Bellman equation. Congratulations. This is what we're going to be working with going forward. And that is the framework that is used in market decision processes. So that is the framework that solves this, that agents use to solve this whole stochastic, non-deterministic search problem where there's random events that are happening that they cannot control. So it's, it's much more complex, but as you can see, because we built up slowly to it, now we already know about this, we already know about this, we already know about this, uh, we know about this, we know about this. So all we did is we just introduced this part over here because there are probabilities involved in the action or the consequences of your action are non deterministic. They are based on certain probabilities. And so there we go. That's how a Markov decision uh, process works and the underlying equation behind it. Uh, once again, it is something that is more that more closely resembles real world problems, real world scenarios, or even game scenarios, because not everything is straightforward. There is, some randomness involved and not always will taking an action in a certain state will always not will not always will it lead to the same outcome and so this is what we're going to be dealing with going forward and that's going to make things way more interesting so hopefully you're excited for that and excited to see what's going to come next and in the meantime i found a really cool paper for you to have a look at this time it's a very applied paper. So this one's actually really interesting to read through. It's called a survey of applications of mark of decision processes, uh, processes. And it was written by white in 1993. There's a link and it'll show you examples of where mark of decision processes actually are used to model real life scenarios. I think I, I was very excited by this. I was impressed by some examples. So population harvesting, for instance, so let's say you have some fish and you know what the population of a fish is. You need to decide how many fish can we fish out this year and what, so that's your current state. That's the action that you're taking. How many can we fish out this year? So that what are the, op, what are the possible outcomes of that? How many fish will we have next year? How many fish will we have the year after and the year after and so on? And it's not deterministic because it's not like if you take out, I don't know, 90% of the population, the next year you will have, you know, back to a hundred percent. It's not, not exactly deterministic. There are certain random factors involved, which are out of our control. And therefore we have to understand what, what, uh, what's going to happen. We have to model what's going to happen. That's where a market decision process is used. Agriculture, there's an example, like same thing, like harvesting crops, how much crops do we harvest? How much, uh, how much do we not harvest? Another one, which I looked at finance and investment, 
Um, like an insurance company needs to decide uh, how much of its funds it will invest in any given, I think, day or year or, or some period of time. And it, there are certain factors that are out of its control. For instance, you know, the market movements, it doesn't know what can happen. So it needs to actually model that somehow and a market decision process is used for that. So here you can see lots and lots of examples. And this is the number of examples given, I think, for each one. And so, yeah, you know, even sports, two examples for sports and epidemics and motor insurance claims, inspections and maintenance and repair and so on. So very interesting. Have a look at that just to give you an understanding of, hey, this is not just all made up stuff, hypothetical, the matrix type of thing. This is actually a real world scenario. So it will give you a better understanding. And, and this is what we talked about in the promotional video for this course that, uh, or the description of the course that we're going to inspire you and your intuition to give you ideas for how to use AI in real life. This is your opportunity. Uh, look at this paper to understand, okay, so we're going to be dealing with mark of decision processes going forward. That's really cool. What do they look like in real life? And this possibly could trigger some ideas for you, how you could apply AI in the future to make the world a better place. And we'd be super happy about that. We'd be super happy if, uh, if you could use what you learn in this course to make the world a better place with AI. How fantastic would that be? So on that note, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, enjoy AI.